So the last time that we imaged M42, we imaged it with a, the triad filter, the Raptor, and our color camera. And at the end of the video, we asked you guys if you wanted us to do that same setup again for longer, or do it with a monochrome camera and filters. So what was the consensus? You guys almost all voted for imaging M42 again, but this time with a monochrome camera. So tonight we're going to use a monochrome camera with our filters, once again from the backyard, our Boro 9 Bay light polluted backyard in Vegas here. Uh, and then we're going to image M42 again. We'll try to aim for the same amount of time, which was, I believe, 9.5 hours. And uh, yeah, so let's do it. Let's get to it. So maybe we should explain exactly what this is. So, <laughs> yeah, so the, the filter wheel of the monochrome camera here is like almost bigger than uh, the telescope itself. So Dustin Gibson uh, from OPT uh, sent us his own camera and filter wheel because we don't have any monochrome camera that's full frame. You may not be able to see it from your angle, but it's like we'll have long. some We'll have some videos around. B-rolls, B-rolls. But um, as you can see here, the, the filter wheel is huge and uh, there's only three filters in there. So we only have the narrow band filters. And uh, yeah, so once again, we have the, the guide scope here. Here we have the focuser. Uh, for the Radiant Telescope. And then we kind of MacGyvered our way uh, around this USB hub here. It's not easy to, to balance, but this is our setup for tonight. So the Raptor with a QHY 600M. Weird. We'll talk about it later, but um, this filter wheel is really, really not our cup of tea. Um, but we'll but you guys asked for it, so here we are. I have to be careful because it's so heavy on the back. Let's see. It's always scary to do that. Can you come, please? Mm -hmm. Can you? Okay. Can you see? Okay. Tighten it. See this? This is like dangling. It's annoying, but... Okay. It's probably... Perfect. Amazing. So the reason that we don't really like this filter wheel is that it requires some extra power and we have to connect it with this little um, cable here into a power source that we have connected all the way down this way and it just needs that extra power to get it to even just change one filter wheel which is kind of unheard of for us because we usually have the filter wheel which you know is so easy to turn with no extra power like I, it really it just baffles us that it needs this extra power. If you don't have this this power source, then you can't even, you can't even turn anything. Yeah. It's so annoying. So we have to bring our own, like either battery or its own power source on the field every time. Uh, why? So again, we're going to be using uh, this camera that has a full frame sensor rather than a crop sensor. And th the really big difference about that is that it has a wider field of view. So as we're getting M42, we're also going to be able to get the Horsehead Nebula as well. Yeah, so we'll try to kind of frame both in the same, you know, in the same frame. So we'll probably have M42 on one, on one side and then uh, the Horsehead on the bottom right or something. We'll see. Uh, but we'll try to include both and hopefully uh, it will look nice. And what I want is really a lot of gas. So uh, hopefully in HA, O3 and S2 we'll have a bunch of that. So let's connect the, the computer and then we'll start slowing and imaging. And then like last time, we'll have to get some food. <laughs> we'll see. It's dinner time. You guys told us you prefer to see the Atlas mount in our videos. So we're making an effort to use that more often. So the plan tonight is to frame the Ryan Nebula and the Horsehead Nebula just like that here on SGP. Um, maybe more uh, centered so we can crop out the edges, we'll see. But um, as for the plan in terms of imaging, we will do 10 minute exposures, so 600 seconds for each. And we'll do probably 9 or between 9 and 12 for each. We'll play with those numbers as the night goes by. Um, but we plan to do uh, two nights, so two half nights on this object, so from uh, sunset to 
uh, 1am uh, when the nebula goes behind the trees. And so we'll try to do two half nights just like the Orion Nebula in the past video, so we can compare the two with the same exposure in total. We've imaged the Orion Nebula several times before. Here it is with our unmodified Canon T3i and tripod. Then with the same camera, but using a small tracker. Same camera again, but with the Orion 8-inch astrograph. A quick one, 20 minutes using the ASI 071MC and Triad Ultra from the backyard. Here is one with Barnard's Loop. Make sure to watch episode 8 on our channel, which is one of our favorite episodes. And then last week, using the 071MC and Triad again, but this time with 9 hours of exposure. Like last time, the moon is in the sky, so the conditions are very similar to the last time that we were shooting. Yeah, so we'll do HA first, and then once the moon is gone, we'll do S2 and O3. Um, but the problem is Orion sets around midnight, 1 a.m. now, so we only have like, what, five hours until it's gone. So we'll have to... Um... Make sure that we get every bit that we can. Yeah. All right, guys, so we just launched the pictures. I'm actually about to order some food right now. We're going to pick up some, as always, okay. outback steakhouse. <laughs> <laughs> we always go there. Anyway, so um, I wanted to show you guys what we usually do when it gets too cold outside. So on the computer here, we have... Let's take a look. We have our SGP, uh, which is connected to uh, any desk, so we can actually connect to our laptop outside. And look at this single frame. It's insane. Look at... Oh, I love it. Of course, Orion, uh, the Orion Nebula is completely blown out, but this time we'll have to make sure we do like 10 second exposures instead of 30 seconds like last time. Right. So the core will be uh, okay, I hope. But um, this is so beautiful. Um, so hopefully we have a full clear night, well at least until 1 a.m. when it starts. But, um, and then we have uh, another thing that I wanted to show you. And this thing is um, going to be on the um, ring camera we have outside as you can see here this one is on this. the roof outside roof of our the eve i guess of the outside and it has a really really good view of our backyard yeah so here you can see the telescope with a bunch of look at all these mosquitoes i don't know what that is That's it's crazy. kind of spooky we'll go outside and check every hour for any cable snag and um i have a timer on my watch yeah <laughs> but right now we'll get some food and i cannot wait to process those results Ooh. It's going to be fantastic. So once again, just like last time, we are back at Outback. <laughs> so one thing you should know about us, if you want to know, we eat out way too many times. So we have to work on that because um, we eat out too much. So we had chicken at home, but we're back at Outback. But every time we're like, you know what? Let's reward ourselves. We're imaging, everything is going fine. Until it doesn't. Yeah. So. <laughs> We can check on the status of the guiding and stuff from our phone right here, so that's good because uh, we have a, a peace of mind, but uh, yeah, we'll be home just soon. We ate and it was delicious. In the meantime, our rig was hard at work. No clouds this time. It was a relief when looking at the time lapse. All right, so everything is going smoothly outside. Uh, it's only 9 p.m. And what was that? That was you, no? No. Check it there. As I was saying, it's only 9 p.m. and she just went to bed, so... Anyway, so I'm keeping track of everything here. I'm waiting for the Meriton flip in about one uh, hour. And um, everything is going so well, so it's perfect. I am really excited about this. And uh, in the meantime, I have to stay up until at least 1 a.m so I can pack up afterwards. And I'm just playing some games here with a, a friend. And then every hour or so, uh, I'm gonna go outside and check on the cables. But everything is going perfectly fine. So good. Orion got behind the trees around 1 a.m. So I took some flats and packed up. We did the same thing again the next night. And stack the data. So something you should know about um, this target, so M42 mostly, in narrowband is that the colors are going to be very strange. So 
I'm going to show you right now three examples and you tell me what you think. So here we have our three uh, master files stacked, H, S, and O. And so here, let's try to combine them in H, S, O, which is the closest possible to the true colors. So uh, red will be H, green S, and B, O. And you will see here, it's going to still look strange, you will see. Of course, I'm not stretched yet, so it's not going to be the true, you know, actual colors, but it's going to be, you know, uh, pretty close. So let's see. See, it's a bit strange, like it's not bad, it's just very greenish, uh, which we can take care of it later. But the, the right nebula is all pink, and I don't like that. Uh, even though I know HA is mostly pink, you know, pink slash red, but um, the right nebula is just green and, and pink, I don't like it. So I'm not going to do this combination. Now, if we try to do the Hubble palette, which is my favorite, usually, uh, I'm going to show you right now, which is SHO, so we just flip red and green, SHO, and once again here you will see it's going to look strange. Look at that. See? Very green, uh, once again it's fine, and then uh, here is just cyan, so it's not bad, it's just... Eh, you know, it's, it's a bit strange. So I might do this one later, but for now, I want to try something new, something a bit crazy, which I've only seen a few times, but I think it's going to be the best. So in this case, and uh, let's try. So I'm going to try OHS, which is very strange. No one ever does that, I mean, for any target, but for the right nebula, it might look okay. And... Okay, so as you can see here, now we have more... The green is mostly blue now, and it will be completely blue once we take care of the green. And then the right nebula is not pink, it's not a uh, weird yellow, it's green as well, which will be removed, so it's going to be mostly blue slash orange. So I'm guessing I'm gonna go ahead and do this combination, which is a bit of a risk, but um, this one looks weird to me, and this one too, so I mean... Uh, this one is looking pretty good. So I'm gonna try that and then it's gonna be either probably you're gonna love it or you're gonna hate it, but um, we'll see. This is our Orion Nebula from last video, with an OSC camera and Triad Ultra. And now, you will see the new Orion Nebula, slowly taking over. But because we used a full-frame camera, we have much, much more to look at. Let's remove the stars and see what it looks like starless. What do you think? Thank you all for pushing us to re-image this target of Orion with the monochrome camera. It motivated us to do it and we love the results. So we hope that you like this video. And we hope you will get an amazing image of Orion as well. And we've also added the raw data onto our Patreon so that members can use it freely and practice. Thank you so much for everyone supporting us and we'll see you next time. Clear, Clear skies! skies.